Hello everybody, I'm Kim Horcher, and in today's entertainment fix, Venom 2 says let there be a new Carnage origin story, a new Marvel captain takes the lead, and a Loki showrunner reveals Rick and Morty laser armadillo sexy time deleted scenes. What could she mean by that? Well, there's only one way to find out. The new trailer for Venom Let There Be Carnage reveals how Cletus Cassidy transforms into one of Marvel's most terrifying villains, Carnage, and it's with some key changes from the comics. Tom Hardy and Woody Harrelson as Eddie Brock and Cassidy, respectively, have a tense showdown of sorts when Brock nervously interviews the serial killer in prison. Then this happens. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. And before you can say, reverse vampire, that bite has Cassidy powered up as Carnage. But that's not what went down in 1991's Spider-Man number 345, where Brock and Cassidy are both imprisoned as cellmates on Rikers Island, when the symbiote gets into the cell, rebonds with Brock, and helps him break out of prison. In an inverse to the trailer, Cassidy actually looks really nervous and scared about the whole thing, while remnants of the symbiote unknowingly drip onto him from the prison bars, starting his whole journey with a lot less violence and agency. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I guess Sony's branch of that, frequently make changes from the source material. And I mean, who wants to watch a shot-for-shot -shot remake anyway? What's interesting is Cassidy has always been a serial killer, but was only somewhat recently canonized as a cannibal even before the carnage transformation in Donny Cates' Venom Run. As an evil, monstrous host taking the Clintar to its scariest potential, Carnage has always been one of the darkest corners of Marvel Comics and a huge problem for Spider Venom. I know it'll be hard to be marketable as a movie, but I hope they actually use some of the more terrifying Carnage character details from all over the comics. And I hope more Donny Kate stuff makes it into the movies. I want Cosmic Ghost Rider. Marvel's What If animated series on Disney Plus will soon remix the multiverse for us, but what if it's not a series of unrelated scenarios and actually leans on one character who will be the running through line into future seasons? That's not a question, actually. It'll be Captain Carter, according to executive producer Brad Winderbaum. Captain Carter is an alternate reality version of Captain America, in which Peggy Carter becomes the super soldier and is set up as the lead instead of Steve Rogers. During a virtual press conference for What If, Winderbaum says she is the one character who has a strong tie to The Watcher, the driving force of the entire series even beyond season one. Winderbaum continued, saying, quote, we realized as we started developing the second season that Captain Carter was going to be the character who we would revisit in every season and continue that adventure. There's a reason why you will come to learn that that story, it was the first one that the Watcher invited us into, and that does have some importance as the series continues. In the comics, Captain Carter joined a team of heroes from destroyed realities called The Exiles. What if? She's the focal point of this series because she's going to be the leader of a team of multiversal Avengers. We'll have to see how that actually unfolds. Marvel's What If premieres August 11th next week on Disney+. Between the Loki alligator and the freaky animated clock, Marvel's Loki series was really weird, but it could have been a whole lot weirder. Loki showrunner Michael Waldron went on the Ringerverse podcast and dropped some details on a few unused scenes from the show, including a writer's room whiteboard that was quickly flashed in a making of feature that said Loki would be doing, quote, crazy mischief, aka sex, and quote, has the gauntlet, holds power, more sex, by alien, etc. Waldron said that this was a pure chaos mini story they were exploring about what would happen if Loki escaped the TVA with some infinity stones. He called the scene, quote, a Rick and Morty style montage of Loki with the infinity gauntlet, and then at the end, it's just kind of like, like, what does it matter? The TVA exists. They're the greatest power. He described another jettisoned scene where, spoiler alert for episode three, Sylvie would be fighting all the people in the beach bar in Hunter C-20's infiltrated mind due to TVA defenses in place, culminating in a laser-mounted armadillo attacking her with Sylvie then kicking it like a soccer ball into the ocean. Wait, I actually want to see that. But Kevin Feige reportedly called the idea too much and they went with a more elegant option, which... 
I guess. There was also a drunken knife fight on the train, which also sounded fun, but alas, no word on when Loki season two will be coming out and whether or not any wild ideas will be held over, but here's hoping. And that was your entertainment fix. I'm Kim Horcher and thanks for watching. Now that you're all caught up on the news, check out our other Marvel entertainment coverage like Dave Batista sharing how Drax changed his life. Download the IGN app on all your devices and for all things everything else, IGN.com.